Hey, Xiaomi here. So today I wanted to do my May wrap up and finally I get to do a monthly wrap up, right? I'm also gonna be doing my June TBR. There are a few books that I would like to get to in the month of June. I don't typically do TBRs because I'm such a mood reader, but hopefully, eventually, probably I'll get to these books. So without further ado, let's get into my May wrap up. Now the first book that I read for the month of May was What Happened to Goodbye by Sarah Dessen. I gave this book, I still don't know between a two or a three, star rating because I really didn't enjoy this book. It really wasn't memorable for me. The audiobook really wasn't all that great either and like none of the characters left a lasting impression and I'm a very character driven person. You have to give me good characters. If you don't give me good characters I mean you could have an inconsistent plot, you can have a non-existent plot and I really would care less. Honestly I'm a character driven person. If you give me a character that's real fleshed out or a character that's going through change or a coming of age story I'm all for it but like in this case I really didn't connect with the character and I thought I was going to connect with the character because she does go through a lot of experiences that I did go through I do know what's you know your parents being divorced and that's something that's really touched in this book but overall the situations and the events that were happening or transpiring within the book I really could care less I mean there were none of the characters like I just said that were memorable there's also a hate to love relationship in that book and that's something that I it's a trope I really don't like too much and, you know, like I said, it really wasn't that memorable. I can't even remember a lot of the um, characters' names. I do know that um, her father was a very interesting character and, like, that dynamic that they had together was really interesting. And if you don't know anything about what happened to Goodbye, it's basically you have this girl whose parents have been divorced. And I can relate. I've been through that. I know what that's like. And I get it that people deal with situations differently. But in this case, I really didn't connect with the character. And she's with her father. She won the custody to be with her father because she really does love being with her father. Father. There's a lot of controversy between her and her mother. Her mother is a character that I really didn't like. But, you know, since her father does travel a lot through different towns, well, she, it's like she she changes her name through every single town that they go through. And what happened to Goodbye is that basically it's like she doesn't form bonds or relationships with any of the friends. And then eventually a lot of things transpire. I'm not going to tell you too much because then obviously I'm going to give you the entire out outcome of the story. But it wasn't something that left a lasting impression in me. And I don't know, it was just, it really wasn't memorable because I read one prior book, um, ab to, blah, blah, what? I read a previous book about Sarah Dess and it was called, um, The Truth About Forever. And I really enjoyed that book. I gave it, I think it was between four or five out of five stars. It was a very enjoyable book. I even devoured it. I read it in two days, but this one, I just, I really couldn't connect. And if I can't connect with the character, if I care less about what happens to that character, then honestly and truthfully, I'm really not gonna, I'm not gonna root for anything that's happening in the book. And it was just, it was a little bit of a disappointment because, you know, like I said, I read one and I really did enjoy it. I thought it was gonna continue to happen. But, you know, there are some hit or miss um, authors for me and this time this book was a hit or miss. And this time, unfortunately, it was a miss. But... That's all I have to say for that book. Um, the next book that I really picked up was Throne of Lies. This book was sent to me on behalf of the author. Her name is Sarah Sakura. She um, contacted me on Instagram and this by no means affects anything that I have to say about this book. I read it with little expectations and I'm glad I went into it that way because this is a really character driven book. If you like books about adventures and like a character going through a lot of different turmoils and things that are happening that will lead to adventure, this is not the book for you. This is a character driven book. You're gonna get adventures like three fourths into the book. But overall, this was really entertaining story. I really did love the world building, the five different kingdoms that are being explained throughout this story. And I just love like what happened because it is, you know, high fantasy. You know, the world has been ravaged by, um, a war that happened and then obviously they reconstructed it through the five different kingdoms but there's a lot of you know differences between these kingdoms they don't it's like they don't share with one another and I would really like to know if the author does delve into these other kingdoms because they did sound really interesting and here you have Amethysta and she's from one of the human um, kingdoms because you have a human kingdom you have elf kingdom you have mermaid I don't remember the others but these are the kingdoms that you have you have five different ones which I've just said and she's from the um, human kingdom but the problem is that she's experiencing these things that are happening to her and she wants to discover like what is really happening with her because she does have purple eyes and you know the things that are happening to her 
aren't really what are supposed to be happening to humans so it's a really interesting concept and you do have a character who's naive in the beginning who's very spoiled and very brat and then throughout the course of the book she starts to develop in character and she starts to learn from her mistakes and I do have to admit that a lot of her escapades are really questionable and also like she's she's really at the beginning a really weak character because when she goes into these adventures they're really short-lived but I, sometimes they, they did annoy me but at other times I was like woman you know you can't do that you you honestly you need more survival instincts but I really did enjoy Amethysta I really enjoyed her love interest I enjoyed the side character it, he was really interesting there's only one thing that I don't agree with and that's one of the romances that did brew in this book or did, did spark in this book it was one that I really didn't agree with I thought it was gonna be purely platonic and it wasn't platonic so there was that that I really didn't like but I, it's interesting like the story doesn't end in a cliffhanger but the epilogue has something that that intrigues you to continue the story like you want to know like when is it that the author is going to release the next book and I do know that she's in, like finishing um the book or like about to be um released but i honestly i would love to read the second book because this was really interesting the world building like i said is great the writing is great and i just i loved it i i connected with her as a character i loved her like i said she's naive in the beginning but she learns through her experiences and it was a really beautiful story i loved this so much and i'm so freaking grateful that she decided to send me this book because i really really enjoyed it and i also did like I annotated it I don't know if you can see it but yeah you can see I annotated throughout the entire book like she was kind enough to send it to me so I was kind enough to like write a lot of things that I felt things that I love a couple of questions that I had and like the highlighted the world building the magic within the book it was just I loved it I have to admit like the relationship with her and her father and her and her mother sometimes is a bit questionable and I didn't like her relationship with her father until he does something and I was like I was fangirling, I have to admit, I was really fangirling because like after that moment I was like, man, I love you. I, I take back everything I said, but I really did enjoy this. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but I gave it four out of five stars. I highly suggest, you know, for you to pick it up if you can find it on Amazon. I really recommend this book, like honestly. And also go with it, go with, go into it with low expectations. Like it is a slow start to the book and you're not going to find a lot of adventure like I told you. But if you don't mind that, and this is gonna be a great read the next book that I picked up is one that unfortunately I don't know like I love Link because I really do love Link but Four Swords wasn't that entertaining for me I gave this three out of five stars um Four Swords Link does change or not change he gets separated into four different colors so you have a manga that's completely in black and white even though sometimes you can like differentiate them there were other times that I was like who the hell is talking now like I don't know I don't understand like there were moments that really did make me laugh I'm not gonna take away from that and like after certain things that they did you were like oh okay this is red lane oh okay this is blue lane but you know it was a bit confusing like a lot of things were being were a little bit confusing because it's like he were he was thrusted into different situations and you're like oh, wait how the hell did he get there so that's what made it like a little bit less enjoyable for me like this is always entertaining i'm not gonna stop reading link just because i really didn't enjoy this one that much i don't rem remember too too much from the game so maybe that might take away from my experience of the manga but like overall I really didn't enjoy it that much as much as I wanted to because I've I've loved every single um, Zelda manga. It, they have been entertaining, they've been great, but this one, like, it fell flat for me. I have to be honest. The next book that I picked up was Ronit and Hamil by Pamela L. Laskin. The premise of this book is freaking interesting. I'm not gonna deny it. Here you have a modern day Romeo and Juliet retelling told in Israel told in verse what the hell are you not gonna like about that the setting the format the idea the concept sounded freaking brilliant for me unfortunately the story fell flat I gave this oh I think I just spit my bad <laughs> that was nasty but anyways back to the, my review I gave this two out of five stars I I think that a lot of things were lost throughout the telling of this story. It being in verse kind of took away from my experience of loving it 
because like if it would have been in a narrative poetic format I wouldn't have mind I wouldn't have minded at all but like being in, in told in verse it took away f a lot of important information that should have been given and it's like sometimes you're thrusted into a situation sometimes he's trying to be really poetic and use a lot of prose and then you're like what makes no freaking sense and then that ending I'm not even gonna talk about that ending because you're left baffled like you're like uh, uh, that's how I reacted when I was reading this book like the ending of it I was like I was so sad I was disappointed I was like you wasted an hour of my life like honestly I was like constantly rolling my eyes situations that I could have cared less for things that I would have loved to be expanded a lot more in fell flat and that's why like this book really has an interesting concept but the delivery was just non-existent it was nowhere to be seen I didn't connect with any of the characters either and like nothing was sad like you know Romeo and Juliet like I, I pretty much think that you know what the hell Romeo and Juliet is but like in this case it was just like well it's a good thing it only cost me four dollars because if not I would have been really disappointed in this book genuinely disappointed but that's how it is right the next book that I picked up was in audio format and that is Warbringer by Lee Bardugo and I have to admit that I just I don't know I didn't feel this book I don't know I, I, I probably have certain issues with Wonder Woman like leaving the mascara I don't like I don't know like like before anything that's supposed to happen I don't know like I'm I'm, I'm really used to the Wonder Woman you know in the animated universe and obviously in the comics and I really did love Wonder Woman in the movie the animated movie and also the live-action movie I ha but like in this case I was like what the hell are you giving me there's also teenage angst and I have to admit sometimes I was rolling my eyes because I was like I'm sorry but Wonder Woman would not have said that she would not be doing anything of what she's doing right now because like when Steve tried to come on to her like if I can I don't know where I have like okay like in this one this one when Steve Rogers tried to come on to her like tried to get her drunk you know you know what she told him like you see this movie this movie is so freaking good like it's a really good animated version of Wonder Woman but I don't know like overall in in the story I didn't I didn't I didn't enjoy anything like I thought the premise was interesting like where does the war bringer come from and all the action that's happening and everything that she's willing to sacrifice at the selfless it was beautiful the writing is incredible as always Lee Bardugo and the, the audiobook was also really good I'm not gonna deny that but you know overall I ended up giving it four out of five stars and also really did like the characters like the fact that they were really diverse characters I hated Jason Mm, like I wanted to punch the man like honestly I really did hate him like a lot um, But you know it was entertaining and Wonder Woman, you know But like I had certain issues with it and those were like my really issues with it I am going to give it like a second chance I'm going to reread it like physically like to see if that like messes with my Experience also with it, but you know overall it was an okay reading experience wasn't all that great I could have cared less for a lot of things that were happening, especially that angst. I'm, I'm not for it, but you know, it is what it is, you know? But that's all I want to talk about books. I really want to tell you like movies that I really did enjoy because like I said, I want to start speaking also about movies. Um, I'm also not sitting on the floor because like I threw on my bag like a couple days ago and I don't want to sit on the floor and then end up staying on the floor because I don't know, like my bag is starting to get a lot better, but... I'm not too too confident in that. I don't want like you know to feel any any kind of pain where I'm not supposed to feel it. So that's why I'm like I'm sitting, but like behind my bookshelves. Um, but the, like the movies that I really did enjoy, and this is one that I really didn't speak about last time, and that's Love Simon. Love Simon came out in Puerto Rico in April, not in March when it came out in the states. It came out in April, and I really I I enjoyed Love Simon. I have to admit that it's a really good adaptation i mean they did change a lot of things like a lot of things and like my mind was always like oh that that wasn't done like that yeah <clears throat> he didn't say that or he didn't say that oh no that wasn't like that that was me throughout the entire movie throughout the entire movie but i was like you know what just shut up and enjoy the movie and overall i did enjoy it there's just like like an issue that i have with it and it's i don't know if it's a huge issue i don't even know if to say it but you know 
overall like i would love to see it again i'm not gonna say that i wouldn't love to see it again but you know overall it was it was a really good movie it could have been worse you know that movie adaptations really haven't been all that great lately in hollywood another movie that i really somewhat enjoy was deadpool 2 i think it was a good movie i really did love cable i love domino being introduced um but i don't know like to me the first one is better than the second one i don't know why it's just like the second one really i didn't I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. Like I thought that it was all over the place, and like the fourth wall being broken, it really wasn't broken too too much. Like in the first one, the first one it was like all over it. Like like in every like not in every single um scene, but like yeah, you had it a lot more. And this one I was like, well, okay, but you know overall, Cable was good. Like I said, Domino, I really did enjoy her. But like I didn't know that that specific mutant was gonna appear, and when he did. I literally screamed his name. I don't care who saw me or who heard me, not saw me because you, you had to hear me. But I was like, oh, I didn't know that he was gonna come out. But it was it was enjoyable. Um, there were a lot of scenes that were enjoyable. Others that I was like, what the hell is this? Like, but you know, Deadpool, you can't give it too too much thought. It's Deadpool. Um, another one that I did see was Black Panther. Um, I, the only thing I didn't feel was the villain, but overall everything else was brilliant like the female warriors that it has next to him like him being black panther and the technology everything was freaking brilliant i loved it the only thing like i said that i didn't feel was the villain another one that i'm really really obsessed with is ghostbusters like the female crew of ghostbusters i'm really obsessed with this movie I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure or not. I don't know. I don't care. I just thought that this was a really good movie. I loved all the female characters. And I also really did love, like, this guy, uh, Chris Hemsworth, the one who plays Thor. I thought that he did a marvelous job playing a stupid secretary. I was like, oh my god, he owned that role and it came out perfect. I really did enjoy him, like, a lot. But those are the movies that I did enjoy and I have been enjoying. Also, I've been watching this like nonstop. Like I can, t like I can like recite it from beginning to end. That's how much I've I've seen this movie. But um, let's get into my July. No, not my July. My June TBR. Let's get into that. Um, so far, I am reading The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. I'm currently on page 228. This is freaking brilliant. Pick it up. That's all you have to do. Just go buy it and pick it up. This, I love it. Like, it, the world building is incredible because you have um, Magius and they, ha they have affinities. But the only problem is that the Magius are basically being extinct. They live in Manhattan and there's this brink that's surrounding, you know, New York City. And if you pass this brink, especially if you're a Magius, then you're going to lose all your powers and you're going to eventually die. So here you have some kind of characters that are like ragtag team kind of characters. And some of them, they have shades, shades of Six of Crow characters. Like there's one that has shades of Kaz and sometimes he does something and he reminds me of him and I'm like oh that's something that like, like a little bit more demented and more devious but that's something that Kaz would have said but like the characters are brilliant Esther I really did enjoy, do enjoy you have time traveling time what what you have time traveling in this book and just like everything is really intriguing you also have different points of view so if you don't like books with different points of views probably not gonna like this because you have so many points of views of so many major characters within the story that it's just intriguing you have assassins you have like their affinities are really freaking brilliant and i just I'm, I'm devouring i'm loving this book the only problem that i had that since you know i really was i didn't feel that well sometimes when i wanted to read i couldn't read because the only thing i was thinking about was my pain in my back but like i i can't wait to like read this yesterday I was reading all day. I read like 100 pages yesterday and then when I was going to go to sleep, I was like, no, I don't want to stop. But this is fucking... Oh, my bad. But this is freaking brilliant. Like, honestly, pick it up. You're not going to... You're not... You're not going to... What is it, the word that I'm trying to look for? You're not going to regret it. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. But honestly, this is brilliant. I can't wait to finish it. Also, like the next installment comes out in October. The next books that I really do want to pick out, pick out, pick up are the search part obviously one part two and part three i already read the promise i did binge watch avatar the last airbender all three books or all three seasons because i really wanted to reread these books because i had forgotten about them so i already read the promise 
and the next one that I will be picking up hopefully next week is going to be The Search. Now the next three books that I'm going to mention, I'm not going to give you the synopsis of it because I really want to go really blind into these books. I'm between this one and another one that I'm going to show you. I I really am intrigued by The Last Namsara. The only thing I know about this book is that the main character, I apologize, but like the main character kills dragons. What? Sign me up. Hell yeah. And this is also raved about on Bookstagram. So I really can't wait to get to, to this. This is by Kristen C Cisarelli. Like, there you have her name. But like, honestly, I can't wait to get to this. And hopefully, if I don't get to it this month, I'll get to it next month. But it's between that one and Children of Blood and Blown. Blown. Blood and Blown. What? Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Arayemi. This is going to be a movie. Why the hell would I not want to pick it up? The only thing I know about this book is that the writing is freaking brilliant and the world building is incredible. That's all I want to know because, you know, I'm a high fantasy kind of chick. So I love this. I, I hope I love this. I really want to get to it. So like I said, it's between this one and that one. I don't know which one I'm going to eventually pick up. And since like I really want to get into thrillers, I really do want to pick up um, The Woman in the Window by A.G. Finn. I thought this was... I thought this was a woman. It's not. I don't know why I thought it was a woman. Like, what the hell's wrong with me? It's a man. I don't know why. But anyways, I really want to pick up this book. Um, it does sound interesting. Like, I heard a little bit about it, but I want to... I just, like, forgot everything about it because, like, I want to go into it blind. Because I do know it's a thriller, and I really want to get more into thrillers. Not horror, because, like, I can't deal with horror. But I want to get more into thrillers, so hopefully this will be the window, pun intended, that makes me, you know, delve into a little bit more thriller kinds of books. But that's it for my video. That's it. For, I don't want to, uh, and it's, it's already 20 minutes, 21 minutes long. I've chit-chatted long enough. Um, I want to thank you for watching. If you want to tell me which was your favorite book for May or which is one anticipated read that you have for the month of June, then feel free and we'll chat down below. But I want to thank you for watching and until next time, peace.